In this short video, we're going to talk about solving a particular type of differential equation, which is called an exact equation. Now let's start with a very simple example. If I have y times dx plus x times dy equals zero, we can solve this using many of the techniques that we have already learned, including separation of variables. But if we make the observation by using the chain rule that the differential of the product x times y equals y times dx plus x times dy, then we can just simplify this differential equation, the original differential equation to the differential of the product xy equals zero, and then anti-differentiate both sides to get x times y equals a constant. So among all of the methods, I would consider this to be the simplest method to get a solution. Suppose that now we look at, instead of having just y times dx plus x times dy, what if I have a more complicated function which involves both x and y? So I could have some function m times dx plus a different function n times dy equaling zero. Well, to understand how we're going to uh, approach this problem, we're going to use a simple formula from multivariable calculus, which says that if you have a function of two variables, then its differential is going to be the product of the partial of f with respect to x times dx added to the partial of f with respect to y times dy. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Uh, if you think of dx and dy as tiny increments in the x and y direction, then the total change when you have those increments is going to say, well, let's have the partial with respect to x times the amount of direction I moved in the x direction plus the partial with respect to of y times the small change made in the y direction. If that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. We're just going to use this as a formula. And so that we can say then if we have a function which is a constant, well then if I take the differential of both sides, on the left-hand side, I get my formula, and the differential of a constant is just zero. So the idea is going to be that if we could start from this formula and work backwards, so we've got, notice how this formula looks like our general differential equation here, and work backwards to find the function f, that would give us an implicit solution to the differential equation. And so I think I'm going to tell you that again. So here we have an example. Here I'm given a function equal some constant. Then I would know that from this formula, if I were to take the differential, partial derivative, I'm sorry, of f with respect to x, multiply that times dx, take the partial with respect to y, multiply that times dy, and I'll get a differential equation of the type that we're looking at. And then the original equation here is an implicit solution. And I have a small typo here. It's not f of x comma y, but rather, the entire equation. So it's f of x comma y. Equals c is an implicit solution to that differential equation. So this is a nice trick if we can start with this differential equation and work backwards to find the function f of x comma y, then uh, that function formula equaling c would be a solution. 
Now we have to be careful because not every equation of this form can be solved in this manner. So not, in other words, not every function of this form looks like the partial of f with respect to x times dx plus, plus the partial of f with respect to y times dy equaling zero. What we need is that the left-hand side has to be something that we call an exact differential. And what does that mean? Well, just what we talked about here, that this expression is an exact differential if uh, it is the differential of some function f of x, y. In other words, this is an exact differential if you can find an f where partial of f with respect to x equals m and the uh, partial of f with respect to y equals n. Well, we might do a lot of work and then discover that such an f does not exist, but we don't have to do all that work. Um, as we'll see in a minute, uh, if we have this partial differential equation where the left-hand side is an exact differential, we call it an exact equation. So there's a simple test to determine if we have an exact differential on the left-hand side without trying to actually find the function f. The left-hand side is an exact differential if and only if the partial of m with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. Now, there are two things I use to help remember this. The first thing is that uh, we're taking the partial with respect to the opposite variable for which we have the differential. So in other words, I'm multiplying m times dx, but I'm taking the partial of m with respect to y. I'm multiplying n times dy, but I'm going to take the partial of n with respect to x to test if I have an exact or a differential. The other memory aid I use is that over here on the partial of m with respect to y, I see the word my. So I just remember the word my, and that keeps it straight for me as to which uh, function has which partial derivative. So let's take a couple of examples. Here we have a couple of uh, expressions and we're going to determine if they are exact differentials. So in part A, my m function is the 2xy squared minus 3 the n function is 2x squared y plus 4. So taking the partial of m with respect to y, I get 4xy. Take the partial of n with respect to x, I get the same thing, 4xy. So I can conclude that that is an exact differential. In part b, my m function is x squared minus y cubed, and the n function is x squared minus 2xy squared. So I take the partial of m with respect to y, I get minus 3y squared. And if I take the partial of n with respect to x, I get 2x minus 2y squared. There's no agreement there. So this is not an exact differential. All right, so now if we know we have an exact differential, then we can work backwards. And the idea is to use anti-differentiation because remember the m function has to be the partial of f with respect to x and the n function has to be partial of f with respect to y. So let's use this idea to uh, solve this differential equation. So my m function here, to be clear, is the 2xy, and the n function is x squared minus y. 
So the M is going to be the partial with respect to X. So let's anti-differentiate that with respect to X. And I'll get X squared Y plus some constant function G of Y. Now I need to find G of Y. So one way I could do this is using the formula that I just found for F, I can go ahead and take the partial derivative of that with respect to Y. And so the partial derivative of X squared would just be X squared Y would just be X squared. And the derivative of GY with respect to Y would be G prime Y. So now I want to set that equal to my n function or the function that is the partial of f with respect to y because I'm trying to find what is the function g of y. So I can see when I set those two things equal to each other that each side has an x squared. And so those can be subtracted out leaving g prime of y equals negative one. And then I just anti-differentiate to say g of y equals negative y. And I could put plus c, but we're just trying to find a solution. Uh, we already know that the solution is going to have a, uh, a parameter in it. So uh, we won't include the plus c here. So we'll have um, my function f is x squared y minus y. That's not the solution to the DE. I have to uh, go back and say that the actual solution now is is that formula x squared y minus y equals some constant. So if I had another constant here, I could just subtract a, from, from the constant of integration, I would just subtract that constant from each side and I would have a different constant. So I don't, when I find this value, uh, I, I don't put a constant of integration because I know at the end, I'm going to have a constant on the right-hand side. Now let's take a look at this same example but we're going to use a slightly different approach. Instead of starting with the fact that m has to equal the partial of f with respect to x, we could start with n being the partial of f with respect to y. So the partial of f with respect to y has to equal x squared minus 1. So now I'm going to anti-differentiate with respect to y, and that gives me a candidate for my f of x function. It would be y x squared minus y. And now some function h, which depends only on x. All right, so our next step would be to say, let me take the partial derivative of this function with respect to x, and I'll set that equal to m. So I'm going to take this function that I just calculated by anti-differentiating with respect to y. Now I take its partial with respect to x. So go through those terms. And the partial, I'm sorry, the partial derivative of yx squared with respect to x would be 2xy. Partial derivative of y, well, y we treat as a constant, so its partial derivative with respect to x would be 0. And then the derivative of h of x with respect to x is h prime of x. Now I'm going to set that equal to m, because that's what the partial of f with respect to x is given to be. And why am I doing this? Again, I'm trying to find this unknown function h. So my calculated partial with respect to x has to be set equal to my given partial 
with respect to x. And then from there, I can see that the 2xy can be subtracted from each side, leaving h prime of x equals 0. So h of x is going to be c. And again, I'm not going to, uh, to, to emphasize this. Really, I should put like a c1 here. I'm not going to include this in my formula. Why? Because now I can define f of x, y, and then I know what the solution is. It's going to be this formula, x squared y minus y equals some constant c. Let's do another example here. It's a little bit more complicated, m and n. So again, as a reminder, m is the function multiplied by dx, and n is the function multiplied by dy. So I'm going to start with this uh, m function, that's going to be my partial with respect to x. I'll anti-differentiate with respect to x. In order to do that, I'm going to need to make a u substitution because inside uh, of cosine, I have x times y. Remember, y is going to be treated as a constant. And so uh, when I anti-differentiate cosine of xy, I'll get sine of xy, but then I would need to multiply it times 1 over y. And I'll have 1 over y times y, so that'll give me 1. So the partial antiderivative would be x times e to the 2y minus sine of xy plus some unknown function g of y. So now I need to find that g of y. And the technique that I use is I take this candidate function for f, and since I anti-differentiated originally with respect to y, now I'm going to differentiate with respect to, anti-differentiated with respect to x, sorry. Now I'll take the partial derivative with respect to y. And then I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to my known partial derivative, which is my n function here. Now, when I set those equal to each other, I can see that each side has a 2x e to the 2y. Each side has minus x cosine of xy. And so what's left over is g prime of y has to equal 2y or g of y equals y squared. So now I know I can just replace the g of y in my first candidate function, and that'll give me f of x. So when I do that, I'll get the solution x e to the y minus sine of xy plus y squared equals a constant. And that's the solution to the differential equation. I still need to impose the initial condition that y of 0 equals 2. So I'll replace x with 0 and y with 2. When I put x equals 0 into the first two terms, they just wind up being 0. It doesn't matter what y is. And so then I'm left with, well, 2 squared equals c, so c equals 4. And now I can write down the solution to the initial value problem. I'm just replacing c with 4. So what if I don't have an exact differential? Well, it still may be possible to solve uh, equations of this type. We need to use an integrating factor, which we'll see in a future video.